Now, for this lady, when you do your whole foley setup, you'll pull it out just like you always do. So you'll see me do my whole sterile technique. But before I do that, I want to show you a few components. So you'll see that I'll set this up just like I always do. I'll pull my gloves out. I'll uncover my lady. Make sure that my, and then you're going to adjust her legs. You can either do a butterfly or I can just have them hold their knees up. If they can't do this, you have to get help, like if they're contracted or if they have dementia. And basically, I just pull that back so that when I'm ready to do it, I can just pull my hand like that and pull that back, okay? Then, this is the part, it's called a fenestrated drape. We never hardly ever use it. If you want to use it, this is where you would, you would just lay it like that. And it just kind of gives you this area. Um, most nurses don't use them. And you're so touching that, you that, right? that means it unsterile? Yeah, that's why I would only touch the tips if I were using it. Okay. I would only touch the, the one inch border and I would just sit it like that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> For this one, you're going to do the same thing. It's got a little tip right there. You're going to touch the one inch border, shiny side down, and you're going to keep this as sterile as possible. And you're only going to touch like underneath. So. So you're going to have to kind of lift her up and... Mm -hmm. You just kind of pull it underneath her legs and that just gives you like a little extra sterile feel. Now, before now before I did any of this, I would um, actually put my gloves on. So let me do it because I can show you everything I think with my gloves on. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to make an extra long sterile feel. Now, if she were uncooperative, I couldn't do this. I would have to leave it on the table. But we're going to put this down here. Okay. Now I'm going to put my gloves on. And these are non latex. Yep. Almost anything in a kit is non latex. And it'll tell you, it says latex free right there on your kit. So once you get these on, you're just going to tell you to before. Okay. Now, what I would do is open this, pour it on top of there. Then I'm going to set this right here. And as long as that tray stays there, I'm okay. Now, you can either take this off and squirt your lube in there, or you can pull this off. That's the lube? Mm hmm that's the lube. Okay, and then I'm going to take the, the fluid off. And I'm gonna fill up and I'm gonna put it to my balloon so that I'm ready to roll with my balloon. Okay, here's the balloon. So you just pull this off, and when you pull this off, make sure it doesn't flop. This is very important. You have to keep this sterile. So you're just gonna pull it on down, and you don't want it to touch anything. I'm not gonna fill it up now, but I'll show you what it looks like when I fill it up. When I push it in, it'll hold inside the bladder just like that. So you can see why when you get a flashback of urine, you want to push about two inches more and then because it'll sit on that. If you fill this up while it's still in the urethra, it's going to hurt to so back off on it and just push it forward. The only time you can pull this fluid out and push it back in is when you start it. Otherwise, if it ever gets pulled down into the urethra, you're going to have to replace it. So if they're doing a lot of complaining, because otherwise you'll push bacteria in. So when I connect that, I stick it in my loop and let it sit. Right there. So do you, you test you the balloon to touch you? No, you do not. I just showed you that. Okay, so I you just don't wanted to see what it looked like. All right. Mm -hmm. Used to, we don't do it anymore. Now I'm gonna have an unsterile hand, so I'm gonna tell her, I'm you're gonna feel me touch you, and you're gonna feel some cold because I'm cleaning you with betadine. Before I clean her with betadine, I want to make sure that she's not allergic to it, because I may have to use something like chloroprep. And then I go <coughs> in, and you're gonna do just like when you clean them. You're gonna do outer. Um, you mean inner? Outer. No, the outer labia. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then you'll do the inner labia. And these are not as hard to hold when they're wet. Oh, you do the outer inner labia. First. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And then I go straight down the center. Now, when I go straight down the center, hers is nice. You can see hers. Um, you have to be careful because you have a clitoris here. Sometimes the clitoris has a little lip on it. Um, women just have that sometimes. And it looks like you could stick something underneath it. Don't. Look for the wink. You'll see this wink. The clitoris will not wink at you. So when you run this last piece right down the center, look for a little wink. And that's the sphincter that enters into the, um, to the urethra. And I say this because sometimes it's not this prominent. It's going to be back in here. 
right inside the vagina. That's where I find them a lot of times. It's just right inside the vagina right the there. The urethra? The urethra. And that's why you have to be careful. This one's nice. You can see it. So what I do is I look at this, and when I'm wiping all the way down, I'll look for that wink. Once I see that wink, I know where I'm going. So I'll throw that away. Then I'll pull my catheter out, and then I'll go ahead and insert. Now, the, the female is not that far. So I should see a flashback about now. I'm going to go ahead and push it a little bit more, and then I'm going to grab it with my hand. That's just to hold it in place, because a lot of times it can, it'll pull out real easy before the balloon's filled. Then I fill my balloon up. Now, if she's pinching down, you can tell her to, if you can't see it, you can tell her to cough. Now, once that balloon's filled, I can let go and cut that out. I can say, give me a cough or bear down like you have to pee, and then it'll open up a little, and you'll see it then too. Um, so you can do when it like When you that. say you'll see it then too, do you you'll see the, the little, flashback? You'll, no, you'll see a little, no, if you can't find it to insert it, uh -huh. because sometimes they're real nervous, so uh -huh. I'll tell them either take a deep breath, give me a cough, or bear down. And once they relax, you'll see it like loosen up. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. And once you see it while they're concentrating on whatever you're asking them to do, pop it in there because it's in. Okay. So if you say give me a cough, as soon as you see it, you'll be ready and just right in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once that's in, I just wipe this hand off because it usually has some betadine on it. Because everything's still pretty sterile because you just cleaned all that up. So you can touch it now with your unsterile hand. Because mm -hmm. now I'm going to hang it. On either side of the bed, there's a three-prong thing that is made just for hanging stuff. It's right, it's right underneath Jesse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the unmovable part of the bed. This is the part of the bed that we always hang stuff. You don't want to hang it on any part that's movable. Not the bed part, not the uh, railings or anything. You always want to hang it there. To put your, um, then I'll take all this stuff and get rid of it. And then I'll a strap, put the strap on, but you put it on like this and it holds on to their, yeah. It holds on to that and then you just adjust it. What you want to do when you put the leg strap on is you want to put it in between here. And I'll show you why. Because when you do that, now you have where it won't pull that way and it won't go that way because of the valve. Okay? And you want it with a little slack in it. The time you can take a urine sample from a catheter is when you first put it in from the bag. Mm -hmm. So the only time you can get the urine out of here is when you first put it in. So then you would just take your thing apart, use whatever cup you have to use. Um, put it in here, and then send it however your lab wants you to send it. Do you have to wait for urine to accumulate into the bag? Usually, if it's first, it's going to come straight in. You're going to have some. Okay. Um, so can you take that thing apart one more time? Mm -hmm. They're all different. You'll just have to learn your, your company's style. This one's just go like this. Um, this is the only time I can take it. From then on, if I need to get a urine sample, what I do in the other facilities where I've worked is we use a syringe and we just take alcohol, we wipe that real good, and this is not sterile, we just do a, a clean technique. Then we'll take a, a syringe, <laughs> stick it on here, and you would pull it. But first you would clamp this for like 10 minutes using your clamp so that you could accumulate a little bit. This is what you were asking, Kristen, so you could accumulate a little bit of um, Oops. fluid in your tube. So then you would put this on there, you would pull it out, what you need, and then you can either put it into your, uh, these things, however your company does it, or what Falkir will do is they will clamp it off for 10 or 15 minutes, then they will use their transfer device they use for IVs, and they stick that in, and then they just put the tubes in, fill them up, and send them down. Um, Alright, to take it down, when you're, say they've had it for a couple days and now they're done, they don't need it anymore. We go in, we make sure they're clean. Clean technique, not sterile. Bring in your little 10 ml, because you'll read and see how much fluid they put in their balloon. You'll un, you'll pull all of the fluid out. So 10 ml is the standard, so if someone else does that and you're removing it, you'll know to take 10 ml out of the balloon? Usually 10 ml is the standard. Um, and it'll be in the chart as well, because that's how you chart on you document on it. Okay. Once I do, I say, take a deep breath. Once you take a deep breath, I pull it out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then you just curl it up um, and throw everything in the trash.
If there's urine in here, you want to dump it in the toilet and mark it on your INA.